Hey guys, I'm Raziel. Welcome to my channel. Please do subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to hit the notification bell. You can also follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Raziemo for more content. So we're going to be continuing this little series that we have going talking about things I hate, products, brands, and today it's all about products that I hate from brands that I love. Just a disclaimer before I do start, hate, I know it's a bit of a strong word, but this is all just for fun's sake. They're just not ones that I would typically go for and they're not ones that I would recommend to others. Still love these brands, still stand behind them, but obviously not every brand is gonna make everything perfect and that's okay. No one's perfect, not even the best skincare brands in the world. <laughs> we are starting off strong here, people, and we are going in for the ordinary. Yes, you all know I love The Ordinary. The Ordinary is the brand that started it all for me. And you might think they can do no wrong, but actually they can. First thing we're gonna start with is the Vitamin C Suspension 23%. I have a few issues with this product. First of all, the 23% concentration of Vitamin C is very, very high. Vitamin C is a very potent antioxidant, has so many benefits for the skin, helps protect the skin from free radicals and UV damage, can also help with brightening the skin and just improving the overall health of your skin. However, it is a bit strong and not everyone's skin type necessarily agrees with vitamin C. It is suggested to keep the concentration between 10 and 15% in products. And this product here goes in for a whole 23%. It's way too high and can be very irritating and sensitizing to the skin. And also the texture of this product. It's in a weird silicone type base. Because it's so silicone as well, it really peels on the skin badly, which is never a nice experience. Just overall really isn't a great idea. I don't know what they were thinking with this one, but I don't know anyone that's had a good experience using this product, to be honest. So definitely don't recommend this one. If you want vitamin C, a better option from The Ordinary is their Ascorbyl Glucoside 12%. Ascorbyl Glucoside is a stable vitamin C derivative because vitamin C in its pure form, L-ascorbic acid, can be quite unstable and hard to formulate with. So a lot of skincare products and brands have decided to use vitamin C derivatives. Ascorbyl Glucoside is definitely one of the better known ones that has some research showing it is definitely beneficial to the skin without the side effects and without the instability that comes with L-ascorbic acid. So that's a good one you can go for. Another one is the Ordinary Ascorbic Acid 8%, Alpha Arbutin 2%, and you still get your pure ascorbic acid. It is at a much more manageable concentration of 8% and also comes with Alpha Arbutin, which is a great skin brightening agent if you do need help with hyperpigmentation. The other two products I'm gonna mention from the Ordinary are quite similar, and I don't even know why they came out with, with these, to be honest, because they just seem like a horrible idea and a disaster waiting to happen and that's the 100% powders. First you have the 100% L-ascorbic acid powder and then you have the 100% niacinamide powder that they came out with recently just probably a few weeks ago at this point. I just don't understand what they were thinking when they decided to do this. You've got this generous tub full of powder and they give you a scoop and the idea is that you don't even use the full scoop. The scoop isn't even an accurate measuring device. You take a bit of product using that scoop, don't fill the scoop up all the way, and you're supposed to mix it into whatever other serums or whatever other moisturizers you're using that day. Mix that ingredient in there, and that way you've kind of DIY'd your skincare in a way. I'm not a cosmetic formulator. I don't know how much I'm supposed to be using, how much is safe, how much would be too much. It's very easy to think that putting more of this product would be better for you, and this can just lead to so much harm and unnecessary skin damage, and I just really don't know why they introduced these products to the market, especially since they already have a niacinamide serum. Niacinamide is included in so many moisturizers and cleansers and products already. This is just really unnecessary. You don't need to be playing chemist at home with your skincare, so... Those are the products that I definitely am not a fan of from The Ordinary and would not recommend to anyone whatsoever. Next, we have another brand that I'm obsessed with and I've talked about so many times and I've recommended so many of their products to everyone and that's La Roche-Posay. La Roche-Posay is an iconic French drugstore brand. You No nonsense formulas, they get the job done, they're not too expensive and they're just really reliable skincare and I love reliable skincare but they have a few products that, again, I'm not the biggest fan of. The first one is this product here. I don't understand, I don't understand this product, firstly. This is their Cero Zinc. It is a zinc sulfate solution. The only thing I do like about this product is the mist. 
super fine, feels nice on the face. This product, however, absolutely does not feel nice on the face at all. This is part of their acne solution range. I recommend using this with their Effaclair foaming gel cleanser, which I love as a toner, as an acne treatment. And then you can use your moisturizer afterwards, the Effaclair Duo moisturizer. It's only got three ingredients in it as well. It's got water, zinc, sulfate, and sodium chloride. Zinc sulfate really isn't the best ingredient to be using in your skincare. I mean, for one thing, there isn't really too much research showing that it has any benefits at all. And also, it's shown that it can be quite irritating when used in large amounts. And considering that this product is just three ingredients, there is probably quite a bit of zinc sulfate in this, which is probably why it was so irritating for me. So definitely don't recommend this one at all. If you're looking for something to help with oil control on the skin, then you're better off using something like niacinamide. This is advertised as an acne solution. You're better off using salicylic acid. The Paula's Choice BHA liquid exfoliant is a great choice. If there are any other products that you guys have in mind that might be from a really great brand, but the products really just aren't it, let me know in the comments below. I think this is really interesting because you know sometimes we have this misconception that because the brand overall is quite great, that everything they make is gonna be perfect. And obviously that's not the case. I'll be really curious to see what you guys have to say and if there's any other products that might be quite surprising in how bad they are <laughs> considering the brand that they've come from. Next we have CeraVe. Now, I've talked about CeraVe quite a bit on my channel. My, my most viewed video on my channel is actually my CeraVe moisturizers video, which is amazing. And so we're going to talk about a CeraVe moisturizer today. The one I'm referring to is the CeraVe moisturizing lotion. In terms of the formulation, in terms of the ingredients, I don't have a problem with this product. It's very good. It's pretty good, to be honest. My problem with this product is the packaging. It is, I think it's a bit misleading, to be honest. It says on the packaging it is intended for dry to very dry skin. And they also have their moisturizing cream, which is also intended for those with dry to very dry skin. First of all, this is confusing. Why do you have a lotion and a cream that are both intended for the same skin type, yet they are so, so different? If you've used this lotion at all, you will know it is definitely not for dry skin. I talked about this in my CeraVe moisturizers video as well, actually. This moisturizer did nothing for my dry skin. I would use it at night, wake up in the morning, and, I, and it would feel like I hadn't applied anything to my skin at all. If you want a more lightweight moisturizer, maybe if you have combo or oily skin, then yes, I recommend it. If you have dry skin and you need something really good, absolutely don't recommend. Lastly, we have an Australian brand that I actually like. If you watched my last video, I might have gone on a bit of a rant regarding Australian skincare brands, but Skinstitute is an Australian brand I can definitely get behind. I've used a bunch of their products. Their formulations are pretty good, really solid formulas. But my problem, my one product that I've tried from them that I absolutely hate is their sunscreen. This is their Age Defense SPF 50. And I tried this, I tried this on Instagram stories and I'm just gonna put the footage here just so you can see how bad this one turned out. This one is a mix of chemical and mineral filters or a mix of chemical and physical filters. Uh, this is definitely not one that I would recommend. Very reminiscent of those traditional sunscreens that are just way too thick and heavy and horrible horrible white cast oh i think i did too much but i mean come on what is that that's not going to go anywhere that's going to take a few solid minutes of me rubbing it in and it's just going to end up being a white cast on my face absolutely horrible it's 2020 we don't need sunscreens like this anymore it's it's time to move on <laughs> So that's it from me. I hope I didn't rant too much. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. And let me know if there are any products that you guys might not be a fan of from really good, reputable brands. I'd be really interested to see what you guys have to say. Don't forget to give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. I'll see you in the next one.